Starting our 10th anniversary church, pastor, and also my birthday is tomorrow. And he brought, look at these gorgeous, gorgeous roses. I feel so special that he thought of us in the middle of a pandemic. Come on, clap those hands and give God praise. Uh, I'm sorry you couldn't be here, but we've got to do the right thing. We want to protect each other. And we will be together soon again. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Hallelujah. Come on, let's glorify him. Let's worship him this morning. Amen. Just continue to worship him and glorify God. Jesus. Jesus is our God. Hallelujah. I'm going to put these in some water. Hallelujah. Come on, keep worshiping him. Keep praising him. And also, I've got to call the conference line to make sure people can listen in on the conference line. Enjoy the praise music, hallelujah. God bless you. I see you tuning in. Thank God. Those of you that do not have um, this capability, I'm also opening. Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister Renee, for the birthday wishes. Ten years of pastoring, ten years of abundant season. Thank you so much. My hallelujah. Oh, you'll be uh, So, yes, please do. So I'm also having the conference call open. Welcome, welcome. Give me a shout out. Please enter your access code followed by the pound or hash sign. So the conference line is open. Just in case. So feel free to call in. The and then we'll leave it open 30 minutes. Hallelujah. Deacon Robinson, can you make sure the door, the front door is locked? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, sing with me.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. I see you. Let us know that you're on. I see you, Sister Julie. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Minister Renee, and anybody else is tuning in. I've got the conference line open. I've been running around, so getting ready for our provincial Midwest leader, Bishop Hezekiah Martin. I am just so excited. What a pleasant surprise that we planned this a year ago. And no COVID, no COVID-19 could keep him away from our 10th anniversary. I just thank God. Somebody clap those hands and give God praise right now. I just need to, so the conference line is open. We can hear you or you can type it in. We are just thankful that not only will we uh, have him here, but we'll also have this entire um, ceremony uh, televised on our Abundance Season YouTube channel. So God bless you and keep you. We are live here at Abundance Season. Come on, let us worship him. Come on, lift those hands like you're here because we know that you are here in spirit. Your church is extended now. You deserve it. Hallelujah. You deserve it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some glory. Give him some praise right now. In the name of Jesus, come on, clap those hands. We made it 10 years in the middle of a pandemic. We made it 10 years, 15 Dayton tornadoes. We made it 10 years when other churches are closing. We made it and still making it. In the name of Jesus, we're making it out. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, nothing is too hard for the Lord. Give him the glory. Give him the honor and give him the praise. Oh, I'm so thankful that we made it. And then tomorrow will be celebrating 59 years. We know so many people that didn't even make it out of their 50s. And we give a prayer out to the Bozeman family right now. And the loss of Chadwick Bozeman. Most of you know him as the actor for the Black Panther. Uh, the, uh, Denzel Washington mentored him. So he had a bright future. And he loved the Lord. So uh, God let him rest in heaven and let him rest in power in the name of Jesus. And he was a civil rights activist. He believed in doing what was right. Uh, so clap those hands and give God praise that we will remember what he done in those short 43 years. And mostly over the past five years is when we really recognized who he is. I am so thankful right now. I, this is such a joyous occasion that my, my bishop is here. You know, you don't know what it's like for a bishop to call you when you least expect it or text you, but he has always done so in the middle of a snowstorm or in the middle of the tornado. If you guys was with us last year, he was the first to bring water to abundant season, standing out there with us on the middle of the curb, in the middle of the parking lot, giving out water. Him and his wife and his beautiful children, that's the kind of bishop we have under Global United Fellowship. So I invited other pastors. I know I invited at least several other pastors. So I hope you tune in because you'll see what a wonderful covering that we have. And covering is important to us because if I'm teaching, who's teaching me? In the name of Jesus, somebody clap those hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands and give God praise that he deserves all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the most high God. 10 more years, 10 more years. Hallelujah. Uh, let us pray right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus and the power of your might, we thank you. We give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise that you are the Alpha and the Omega. Hallelujah. You're the beginning and the end. You are the way maker. Father God, you're the miracle worker. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Father God, bless everybody by the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet, all 100 trillion cells, all 206 bones, all nine systems of the body. Oh, Father God, we speak miraculous healing right now that by your stripes, oh, Father God, they are healed. You said that you were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and by the chastisement of our peace, Father God, 
by your stripes we are healed in accordance with Isaiah 53 5. Father God, we pray for the families that have lost so much. Father God, on both sides of the fence, Father God, the scripture that you have given me for this year as we go into a, another election and all the things that are happening, that our world is changing, oh Father God. Let us remember John 8.44. That Satan is the father of all lies. And Father God, you're all truth. And the truth will set us free. Father God, give us the spirit of discernment to hear the truth in the name of Jesus. Come on, let us praise him. Let's give God the glory in the name of Jesus. Let God know. Shout to the rooftop. Because we want to make the devil mad this morning. Because a lot of people didn't think we would make it. But only God, only God keep these doors open. Not by might, not by power, but by thy spirit, saith the Lord. We may not look like any other church, but we look up to God. And as I said last year, can't stop, won't stop. Not in the middle of a pandemic, we were the first pantry to stay open because of the gifts and the skill sets that God has given this ministry. It's beyond just a hallelujah, but it's so much more. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Over 3,000 plus people have been, in the name of Jesus, have been uh, blessed from this ministry. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify your name. In the name of Jesus, come on, clap those hands and give God praise. If you are on right now, just type in amen. If you're on the conference line, just say amen, amen. We're going to have it open another 30 minutes, and then we're going to close it out. If no one calls the conference line, amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. And you can look by Facebook and call if you like. The conference number is 319-527-3511. Access code 824-825-POUND. So if you want us to hear your voice, call in. And we'd love for you to, to hear you live as well as you hear us live. I'm just so excited. Giving God all the honor and the praise again. The conference line is 319-527-3511, access code 824-825-POUND. What a blessing. I see you, Sister May. God bless you. God bless you. It's so nice to see all of you on this morning. And on time, giving God the glory. We're only seven minutes in, but uh, Bishop, he just got in from Washington, D.C., Come on, clap those hands, give God praise this morning. Y'all need to understand what kind of covering we have, what kind of blessing we have. Now, a family man, a scholar, he oversees churches all around the world, and specifically the Midwest for Global United Fellowship. And he's here today to give us a word for abundant season, a retired school teacher, uh, accolades academically, I cannot tell you how much we are blessed and we uh, serve under and he serves under bishop marvin l sapp who is now in uh, fort worth texas we were blessed to be at his uh uh uh, uh pastoral um installation thank you a uh, bishop is helping me right now i almost said the a consecration and it wasn't a consecration you saw it about to come out of my mouth amen and so we are live and i am real so amen so I'm just so thankful to have uh, our Bishop, Bishop Hezekiah Martin, Midwest Provincial Leader of Global United Fellowship. Come on, clap those hands and give God a praise. Now, one of the things that you know that I am totally about making sure we're safe. So I have the ultraviolet on because I've already been here. So I am sanitizing right now so that he can touch anything here. He can touch the uh, mouse here, amen. We got hand sanitizer here for him. So we wanna make sure that he is safe. Hallelujah. And now he will come, praise God. God bless you. Watch the cord. Which mic can I hold? Hold on a second. Can I hold a mic or do I just? Oh, I'm going to give you a mic. Oh, okay. <laughs> can you see yourself? Make sure that they can see you. Hello. 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 Hello.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Bring your greetings. On behalf of Global United Fellowship, we are here to celebrate Apostle Robinson. On behalf of our presiding prelate, Bishop Neil C. Ellis, our Metropolitan sure, Bishop sure. Marvin L. Sapp, we're here to celebrate this 10th anniversary of Apostle Robinson and also to celebrate her birthday. Hallelujah. Amen. So Roll you can praise God right where you are. Amen. We're thankful for those that are viewing and are watching. We need your prayers as we celebrate this woman of God and this great ministry that has continued to do work. Uh, very important that we remember that a lot of times when we look at ministry, we would assume that it is uh, that God will look at us uh, quantitatively instead of qualitatively. God is looking at the quality and looking at what we produce and what we share. Uh, I'm grateful that through this pandemic that the Lord has reminded us that the church has left the building. Mm. And that it's not about numbers, but it's about being authentic and genuine. Apostle Robinson was one of the most authentic and genuine uh, women of God, uh, just preachers, period, just good people all around that I have met. And I will not uh, miss this day for anything. So right where you are, can you just praise God for her and praise God for this ministry, to the deacon, to the to uh, saying to this here, we want to share and just offer some words of encouragement um, this morning. This is still the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want to share for just a couple of moments from 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Just looking at the 17th verse. Let us go before God in prayer. It's once again, God, that we thank you for this moment that you've allowed us to share. We're thankful that we don't look like what we've been through. And we're thankful that, God, that you've been able to keep us and sustain us and hold us through all this time. God, we know that you we know that you're here because we feel your presence. And we're just grateful that um, you allowed us to be in the worship experience one more time. There's some that didn't make it, but you gave us traveling grace and mercy to just be able to feel you again. In Jesus' name, have your way. Hide me behind the cross. All God's children said together, amen. 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 From 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, 17th verse, just one verse, and it shares from the King James Version. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. I want to share for just a couple of moments for those that are here in worship with us, the sanctuary, and for those that are home, just from the thought of, if I knew then what I know now. All right. Amen. Amen. If I knew then what I know now. I, I believe in Apostle Robinson's death is that a lot of times when we look at individuals in ministry, we want people to be holy, but we don't want them to be honest. The fact of the matter is, is that too many times we have people that are looking happy, but not being happy. Looking happy and being happy is two different things. But see, there are some things that nobody ever told us was attached to the assignment. I know you've been home, and I know that there are some over here, but you can just amen right where you are. Nobody ever told you that walking with Jesus will cause people to mistreat you. Nobody ever told you that walking with Jesus will cause people to push you to the side. Nobody told you that walking with Jesus will cause you to be talked about, to be scandalized, to be, um, to, to be mistreated. But walking with God and, and walking with your assignment, there are some things that become attached to the assignment. And I want to help somebody um, as they maneuver through this system and through this season Elevation will always expose your public and your private enemies. Let me say that again. Elevation will expose your public and your private enemies. I'm going to say it one more time for those in the back. Elevation will expose your public and your private enemies. Do you realize that there are some people that are holding grudges against you for things that they did to you? But this is the thing. You Listen, this is the thing. All you trying to do is not be better than nobody else. You just trying to be the best you that you can be. So listen, as long as you do that and say, I'm walking and I've got the strength and the power of God that's keeping me, you can say, listen, the Lord 
Lord is sustaining me. The Lord is moving me. The Lord is making a way for me. And people who are not spiritual, they don't understand, and they can't understand where you're coming from. But I know I've got somebody that don't mind waving their hand at their home and saying, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. You can be anointed and broken at the same time. Ooh, and I look at this particular text and I struggle with it because within this passage, it lets you know that even though you are a believer filled with the precious Holy Ghost, that you are not exempt from trouble. And your faith will go through seasons of evaluation. So the first thing that you see within it, you see Paul, he's he's dealing with this because uh, he, he had attacked the church and now he's come to the realization and believing that Jesus Christ died on the cross for his sins and got up with all power in his hands. He goes from being one who attacks the church to now he is one who loves the church and trying to build people. So he realizes, number one, that there, there have been some unauthorized connections. Let me help somebody here that might be at home for the writers. People don't walk away from people that they love, but people walk away from people they've been using. That's why givers have to set boundaries because takers don't have limits. Just because someone was a part of your history doesn't mean they'll be a part of your destiny. So you have to learn how to stop apologizing for growing. Listen, it was you that was praying in the midnight hour. It was you that was having worship by yourself. As a matter of fact, you don't have to even be in church to worship. You can praise God in your living room. You can praise God in your kitchen. You can praise God in your car. Because listen, with the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. And the Lord will show up. Hallelujah. Says unauthorized connections were revealed when Paul came to Jesus. But then also, people had something to say about him. Number two, he had to deal with powerless words. I remember in the Air Force that they shared with me the military term about propaganda. And the devil likes to use propaganda. He, used, he likes to use uh, words because he knows words have power. As a young boy growing up, they told us sticks and stones may break our bones, but words will never hurt us. The devil is a lie because some people can say some stuff to you that will rock your world and make your Hurt. All it takes is one person. That, what, let me let me say this right here. Some of your greatest enemies now used to be your closest friends. Come on now. It says powerless words. The tongue rises up as an enemy to discredit what you know about God. But even with that, some of your greatest compliments will come from your enemy. The reason why is because oftentimes your enemies see more potential in you than you see within yourself. You're talking back to me. So then the, the, the third thing that I saw in it was that um, the proactive power of God. Um, Pastor Roberts, Dr. Roberts, I heard Dr. Roberts and you will understand and remember that God, the ubiquitous nature of God, that he's omnipresent, that he's omniscient, that he's omnibenevolent, uh, he, 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 he operates through the strategies. That's why the definition of a miracle is anything that's extraordinary event that surpasses all human or natural power. The Lord is always leading us to where we need to be, not where we want to be. And you can't allow what you see to make you forget what God said. Let me help just somebody, three people right where you are. You can't allow what you see to make you forget what God said. I'm going to say that to the walls. I'm going to say that one more time. You can't allow what you see to forget what God said. Listen, there was no way that, that, that you were supposed to be here on Troy Street. There was no way that you were supposed to be in this facility. There is no way that people from all different genders and walks of life and nationality were supposed to come into this place. But God needed somebody to be placed on this side of town to tell somebody that Jesus is the only way. And that's why he couldn't just use you, but he had to use them to have been planted to be here. Can I help somebody here? Visionaries have to have the ability to see through walls. For those at home, visionaries have to have the ability to see through walls. If I just see a wall, I 
will think that life will end in a place of failure. But God allows some walls to be built up in your life to cause you to speak to the wall, to, to climb over the wall, or to use the power of the Holy Ghost to tear down the wall. So Paul was sharing with them. I had some enemies. Paul shares with them. I had some people that tried to tear me down. Through these 10 years, Apostle, I know there's been some people that said you should have never walked out on your own and, and started a ministry. But what they did not realize, that if you had to do it all over again, you would have stayed where you were, sitting in the pew. I feel Jesus now. But the Lord had a greater assignment for you. And he had people that were connected to you and connected to your destiny. So that's why God needs some faithful people to walk by faith to do his work. You ain't talking to me. And so here it is that Paul says, I went through some chapters to experience his true authentic presence in my life. He says, I was there in Acts 6 to witness Stephen's murder. I was there in Acts 8 when they declared war on the Christians. I was there in Acts 9 of the Damascus Road experience when the light shined from heaven. I was there in Acts 12 when they returned from Jerusalem. Acts 13 when they laid hands on Saul and Barnabas. I was there in Acts 13 9 when they no longer referred to him as Saul but they called his name Paul by a signalization of saying that God is the only one that can change your name. I was there in Acts 20 when I went through an unjust court. I was there in Acts 27 when I went on the storm called Eurachlodon and the boat began to tear up and we had to hold on to broken pieces to get to the island. I was there in Acts 28 when I got there in the island and I thought I escaped from the storm and the people looked at me and he says I went down and got some wood but a snake bit me but I didn't die like other people thought I would die but I shook the snake off into the fire and they went from talking about the saying that Paul must be one of the gods. He says, I've experienced it for myself. He says, listen, one chapter of your life doesn't determine the rest of your life. Now I understand when Paul says, now therefore there was no more condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. We walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now I understand when he says, and we know all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. Now I understand when he said, if God be for us, who can be against us? Now I understand that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings and may come upon the death. Now I understand that I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Now I understand what my God shall supply all of my needs. That's why I am. We don't need any music to close because the music of my praise helps me to close. And can I tell somebody the only reason why I give him glory and I shout the way I do is because I remember my, my two they have sickle cell and one had they had went through a crisis the only way we knew that they had a crisis is because they had to tell us they had a crisis and they were in some pain and I went down in the hallway and I'm saying to myself Lord I've been praying for other people's family Lord I've been there for other people's children but why would my daughter have the affliction on her body I said Lord I've been praying for other people Lord I've been strengthening and encouraging other people. But Lord, why would you allow it to happen in my house? And so I went down the hallway and there was a man in a wheelchair. And, and, I, and I walked up to him because he was the one that was supposed to go from room to room. And I, I looked at him and he was encouraging me and telling me everything was going to be alright. I, I said to myself, I said, wow, how is it that you're able to encourage everybody else and you missing things with your body and he said to me either I can be mad at God for what 
my lost clock and thank God for what I got left. Popeye, y'all, may the Lord bless you real good. But is there anybody in your living room that can thank God? Because either I can be mad at what I lost or I can thank God for what I got left. What do you got left? I got my mind. I got my peace. I got my joy. I got my happiness. I got my legs. I got my feet. I got my heart. I got my hands. I got my eyes. I got I can move. I can breathe. I've got shelter. I've got food. I please provide it for me. He is your holy child. He is your holy niece. He is your holy rapper. He is your holy seeking do. I still got Jesus. And is there anybody here that can show I still got Jesus? Paul says, I've learned all these things, but it took me from season to season, from chapter to chapter. And he said, but through the chapters, the Lord never gave up on me. And he said, because the Lord hasn't given up on me, it's my responsibility to keep the faith and keep telling the world just how good God is. Apostle Robinson, we're here to celebrate you, your birthday, as well as this ministry. You keep on keeping on. You keep on providing. You keep on ministering in this community. You keep on sharing with families. God will reward you for your faithfulness. And I believe that God is not through with this ministry and he's not through with you yet. That he's kept you for such a time as this. When other people were playing church, you were the only one that was real. When people looked at you different from being a prayer warrior, the Lord put you in a place to share that the only way that's going to be breakthrough in this city is through the power of prayer. We thank God for her. In Jesus' name. And encourage her to keep on keeping on. We love you and there is nothing you can do about it in Jesus' name. Thank you. Come on, cross those hands and give God praise. Thank you, Bishop. Come on, clap those hands and give God praise. We made it out. Made it out. I made it out all right. I made it out. I made it out all right. This is a good time to get the offering. I made it out all right. I made it out. I made it out all right. Thank you, Lord. How many of you made it out? Give God the glory. Give God the honor. Give God the praise. I'm still in the fight. I made it out all right. Come on, somebody. I need to hear y'all say, I made it out. Made it out all right. I made it out. I made it out.
name, Jesus' name.